Good afternoon, dear listeners. Thank you for studying the theory of electrical engineering on our channel. Please subscribe to the channel so as not to miss the appearance of new lectures. In this lecture, we will look at how you can get a non-distortion line in real conditions. We also get a happy ending to the transatlantic cable story. Remember, we started our lectures on this section of the course with this story. But first, let's remember what was said in the previous lecture. We have learned that the attenuation factor and phase velocity in lines with distributed parameters depend on the frequency. This effect leads to waveform distortion in the lines. To eliminate distortion in the line, it is necessary to implement a mode in which the attenuation factor and phase velocity do not depend on frequency. This is possible if there is a relationship between the primary parameters shown in this formula. However, in the last lecture we didn't find out exactly how this ratio can be achieved. That will be the topic of this. First of all, let's recall lecture number 9 titled A Line Without Distortions, Main Idea and Properties. You can watch this lecture on our channel through the link provided in this QR code. In this lecture we discovered that the phase velocity and attenuation factor in a line will not depend on the frequency if the question of the line's specific resistance divided by its specific inductance is equal to the question of its specific conductance divided by its specific capacitance. Such a parameter relationship can be achieved by modifying one or more of the line's primary parameters. However, the primary parameters of the lines depend on the diameter of their conductors, the distance between them, and the electrical and magnetic properties of the medium surround these conductors. Therefore, we need to analyze what change need to be made to the line to make it distortion-free. To perform this analysis, let's consider a specific electric power transmission line with known primary parameters. Let's turn to lecture number 8, titled Phase and Group Velocity of Wave Propagation. You can watch this lecture through the link provided in this QR code. This lecture presents the parameters of real electric power transmission lines in Ukraine. Let's consider, for example, the transmission line from Mykolaiv to Kherson. Its primary parameters are given on this slide. Let's calculate question of the line's specific resistance to its specific inductance. As we can see, it equals 102. And the question of specific conductance to specific capacitance is only 6. Therefore, equality is not satisfied in our case, indicating that we are dealing with a distorted line. Which of the primary parameters should be changed to make our line distortion-free? 
Let's examine this question in more detail. We have four primary parameters to each lines. Therefore, theoretically, we have four possibilities to create a distortionless line. Let's consider all these possibilities and choose the most rational option from the point of view of practical implementation. So, we need to either decrease ratio 1 or increase ratio 2. The first possibility is to decrease ratio 1 by reducing the numerate of the fraction, which means reducing the line's specific resistance. This can be achieved in two ways. Increasing the cross-sectional area of the conductor or reducing its specific resistance. Silver has the lowest specific resistance. Therefore, if we go down this patch, we would need to manufacture the line wires using thick silver wire. However, this approach is expensive and the line would be very heavy. The first option is not feasible. The second possibility is to increase ratio 2 by increasing the specific conductance between the line wires. This means that the insulation between the wires should be less effective. However, this would also increase the line losses. Therefore, the second possibility cannot be implemented in practice. The third possibility is to increase ratio 2 by decreasing the specific capacitance. This can be achieved by increasing the distance between the conductors. However, this would increase the geometric dimensions of the line. Therefore, this possibility is also not implemented. The fourth and only feasible possibility is to increase the specific inductance. This is only rational way to create a distortional line. Let's calculate the specific inductance that the mikolaev herson transmission line should have to be a distortionless line. The calculation of inductance is shown in this slide. We will assume that the ratio of line conductance to line capacitance is 6. Therefore, the line resistance to line inductance ratio should also be 6. From this, knowing the line resistance, it is not difficult to calculate the required value of line inductance using this formula. The result of the calculation is 77 times 10 to the power of minus 7 Henry. This value is nearly 17 times higher than the actual line resistance. Is it a problem to increase the line inductance 17 times? In fact, as we will uh, see on the next slide, there are no problems. The method of transforming a real line into a distortion-free line, which we discussed in the previous slide, was theoretically developed by the English scientist Oliver Heaviside in 1884. And five years later, Serbian scientist Mikhailo Pupin 
proposed a practical implementation of this method. The uh, inductive impedance of the line was atypically increases by incorporating additional induction coils along its length. Very simple method, as you can see. These coils is we are named named a uh, pooping coils, and the transformation of a line with distortion into the non-distortion line was called line popinization. This method was practically applied to correct the operation of the transatlantic uh, telegraph cable. Remember, at the beginning of this lecture series, we mentioned that the process of transmission telegrams through cable was practically impossible due to significant distortion of the telegraph signal during trans transmission. The cable correction was carried out as follows. A section of the cable was raised from the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean, cut, and pooping coils were connected into the cable break, as shown in this illustration. The connection point was insulated and the cable was uh, immersed uh, back into the water. One of these coil is keep in the Postal Telegraphic Telephonic Museum in Bel Belgrade. Uh, take a look at how the coils looked which enabled fast communication between two continents over a distance of more than 2,000 kilometers. This cable successfully operated for several decades and seats to be used uh, in the early 20th century when uh, telephonic communication, rather than telegraph, was established between Europe and America. Dear listeners, our lecture has come to an end. In it, we learned that in order to create a non-distortion line, it's necessary that a special relationship be observed between the primary parameters of this line. The only possible way to fulfill this ratio is to artificially increase the primary inductance of the line. Theoretically, this patch was proposed by Oliver Heaviside and practically it was implemented by Mikhailo Pupin. This implementation made possible the correct transmission of signals over cable between uh, Europe and America and ensured stable telegraph communication between the two continents for many years to come. But transatlantic cable and telegraphy are not uh, the only possible application of a non-distortion line. We will tell you about this in the next lecture. Thank you, dear friends, for your attention. Subscribe to our channel so you don't miss the next lectures. Please give this video a like. Goodbye.